What is the us versus them all about? You're a business person. You've been in many organizations. I mean, every single organization I have ever worked in has us versus them dynamics. Usually it's related to occupational mandates, sales versus marketing, uh, legal versus HR, engineering versus manufacturing. You know, those are inevitable. Uh, they are predictable. But those same type of us versus them dynamics happen uh, based on identity factors. Uh, you know, one that used to be much more prominent was men versus women. Uh, and, and that, thankfully, has really narrowed over many decades. But there are, there, there are an endless number of us versus them dynamics that exist in every workplace I have ever been in. Some of them are necessary uh, executive versus non-executive, management versus non-management, but the degree to which those gaps exist impact the organization. So even though these us versus them dynamics are inevitable and predictable and they can exist without causing great damage, it, it really depends on the organization and how it happens to be handled. So the, the idea of us versus them cannot be uh, erased or we, we won't ever cure this. And I don't, I'm not trying to cure this problem. I'm trying to eliminate the damaging um, impact that divisive uh, us versus them dynamics have. So what is that negative impact? I mean, let's um, look the easiest thing I can connect with um, sales versus marketing, right? That's like a nice, easy one for all the marketers and salespeople in the world. The leads aren't good enough. Salespeople aren't closing the leads, you know? So can we just talk about the negatives of it at the moment? You know, so where is that a challenge? Mm -hmm. So what I have found is that in most organizations, they have the money earning departments and the money using departments. Uh, you need marketing uh, to promote your products and you need people to sell those products. And in some organizations, there is this inherent hierarchy, that if you're in a money earning position, you're more important. Uh, the same thing happened in my very first job in automobile manufacturing. You know, in the United States, automobile manufacturing, the there was a lot of um, weight put on white collar workers. If you had an MBA and people who actually made the car were not viewed as important. They were blue collar workers. And so when you give this preferential treatment, uh, hierarchical power to one group, sometimes they wield it in such a way that it damages relationships. Um, for example, the way you talk about a different group, um, the way you uh, give all kinds of benefits or even uh, income. If you are prioritizing one group so much more than another group, uh, you're really saying this group is way more important. But in actuality, well, sorry, what happens when you prioritize one group so heavily is that they start to think that they're more important and this divide occurs and they begin acting as competitors. I, I'm sure you mm. have seen organizations, yeah. you know, those marketing guys or can you believe the people, you know, in such and such a department and they talk about each other as competitors, they behave, they won't share information, they will... Um, even sometimes purposely sabotage another person or another group. And this is ridiculous because the real competition is outside. Mm. The, we have plenty of other competition outside, different companies with different names. And what the organization, the people in that organization who are behaving as competitors forget is that the name on the paycheck or the pay stub is the same. We all have that in common inside and in organization, whether it's a financial organization, um, car manufacturing organization. So anything we are doing to limit the productivity, the trust, the relationship, the communication inside our own organization in, in between departments makes the whole organization weaker. And that doesn't help, you know, it may help one person or one group temporarily, but fundamentally, it's causing the entire organization to be less competitive. And so we're really talking about um, the dynamics within the same organization. Yeah. So this us versus them is within the same organization. It could be across, um, it could be across departments. It could be across offices. It could be across 
the regions, right? Um, but it's kind of internal thing that we're thinking about. Like, is that the best way to frame it at the moment? Yes. I mean, it depends on who who is the we. So the we. So who is the we? So who is because because oftentimes it feels like the we. It, well, you. T- I mean. Who's the way? Yeah. Let me ask you that question. I was just about, like about to just go into a tirade of having some guesses, but that's why you're here. <laughs> so let me ask you, who's the way? The we is who you decide the we is going to be. And it's usually up to the leaders to decide who is the we going to be. And again, I'm going to say that traditionally there is a group in the organization that is prioritized. Um, that is the we and everybody else is them. Again, to a degree that needs to happen. But if you are, if I have an organization and I know you do have an organization, I know that you want engagement. You want everyone to be operating at their best potential and feeling like the goal of the organization is in alignment with their goals as individuals so that everybody is pulling, if we're going to use like a rowing metaphor, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. pulling in the, in the same direction. It, it's so obvious. But in terms of we can be many things. So in global companies, I tend to work with huge global companies um, with headquarters. For example, the headquarters might be in Tokyo mm. and they have regional offices all over the place. Well, sometimes the we is limited to Tokyo. <laughs> So if you're not somebody who has worked there or speak Japanese or travel there, you feel like a marginalized outsider. And again, that's not good for business. So it's really up to the organization to determine who is the we and then how is that expressed? Mm. How do leaders talk about the organization? Uh, Where do they put their resources? Where do they spend their time? Uh, And and that kind of thing. So, it really starts with the leadership of a company, doesn't it? That's where it kind of starts, isn't it? And it's kind of, I think, um, the most obvious statement of the us versus them is the us is the leadership team and the them is everyone else in the company, right? Yeah, and that's- closing that divide, kind of, um, if everybody feels like they are part of the us, then they feel more included. Mm-hmm. They feel that they're part of the same team, and they don't feel so, is the word isolated the right way of thinking about it? Is that? Yes. A different way I would say is that they feel seen, they feel heard by the leadership. Um, and, and when you feel seen and heard in any circumstance at, at a cocktail party, uh, mm-hmm. in your family mm-hmm. gatherings, uh, being picked for a sports team, when you feel seen, you feel good. We're humans. We want to belong. And mm-hmm. certainly the workplace is one of the most important places outside of our family lives that we want to belong, even Mm. if we're, we're just doing a job, right? So many people are just doing a job. Uh, Many people have careers. Uh, You know, once you're in leadership, you definitely feel a sense of uh, connection in a way that perhaps as someone just doing a job doesn't, but even people who are just doing a job need to feel some level of connection for the organization to be operating at their peak potential. And I think that last point that, um, that like I just heard about peak potential um, is key for an organization because yeah, you can still operate with this in terms of the divide. But the thing I've seen um, in the companies, like in the companies I've been involved mm-hmm. with is that like if people are having a good time and if they feel connected and if they feel that they're part of the same team and if they feel like they're part of the us, they perform better. They're happier. The teamwork is better. There's less friction between people. There's more collaboration. And so the benefits are there to figuring this out. And I just wanted to get that first part out on just why people should care, right? Because because it is about creating the best sports team that can win the championship, right? Absolutely. Yeah. You you've nailed that on right on the head. That's that is fundamentally uh, why we building is important in organizations and why it leads to better productivity, more inclusiveness, people feeling safe, welcome. All mm-hmm. of those things are good for business. 